Boeing and Airbus dominate commercial aviation. The two have a functional duopoly, controlling 88% of the commercial aircraft market. And that market is huge, projected to reach a staggering $170 billion by 2030. In order to capture as much of that pie as possible, both sides are constantly pushing the technological envelope. They've poured innumerable resources into R&D, exploring radical innovations like space-age materials, hydrogen propulsion, and even folding wings. But what if I told you that one of the biggest competitive differentiators that Airbus has, has absolutely nothing to do with crazy futuristic technology? In fact, this particular competitive advantage has existed for decades and has allowed Airbus to win countless deals throughout the years. So what is it? What is Airbus's not-so-secret weapon? Let me explain. Now, if you're watching this video the day it comes out, Happy Friday! I'm sure you're pumped for the weekend, and hopefully you were excited to see this video hit your inbox. But me? I'm probably not having the best day. I put a ton of work into these videos, so release day is always really stressful. In fact, I used to actually lose sleep the day before a big release. But that's not so much the case anymore. I've learned to manage this anxiety with tools like BetterHelp, which is today's sponsor. Now, you've probably heard me talk about BetterHelp before. They're the platform that's making therapy accessible to all. It's designed to be super convenient. First off, it's entirely online, meaning you'll connect to their network of tens of thousands of licensed therapists, all from your phone or computer. Second, BetterHelp does all the heavy lifting for you. After you fill out a short questionnaire, you'll be automatically matched with the right therapist to tackle your specific needs. And if for whatever reason you just don't gel with that person, it's always free and easy to switch. More and more people are using BetterHelp to make their therapy more accessible and convenient. And so can you. And if you visit my link, which is betterhelp.com explains, you'll get 10% off your first month of therapy, and you'll be supporting my channel. Now, before I tell you exactly what Airbus' secret weapon is, I want to run a little bit of an experiment. Right now, I'm sitting in an Airbus cockpit, and I want you to tell me what exact plane I'm in. Is this an A320, A330, A350, or A380? Don't worry, I'm going to give you some close-up views to help you figure it out. Okay, so now that you've taken a look around, were you able to figure out what type of Airbus plane this actually is? Well, it turns out it's actually a trick question. What I just showed you isn't the cockpit of a single Airbus aircraft. It was a mishmash of practically all of them. But unless you're a seasoned Airbus pilot, odds are you probably couldn't tell the difference, and that's entirely by design. You see, the secret weapon that I'm alluding to, the one that gives Airbus such a big advantage, is cockpit commonality. Now, I'm sure that most of you are familiar with this concept. It's the practice of using the same systems, interfaces, and cockpit layouts across different types of aircraft. Both Boeing and Airbus leverage this practice to some degree. As an example, the cockpits of the 737NG and the 737 MAX are practically the same. And that's also true for the A320 and A320neo. But what you might not realize is just how far Airbus takes this practice and how deeply it permeates their entire commercial philosophy. Their cockpits aren't just similar within individual families. They're similar across the entire product lineup, from the relatively small A320 to the absolutely gargantuan A380. Okay, but just how deep do these similarities run? Are they just cosmetic? Well, in order to find out, I sat down with Jan Bufils, an Airbus experimental test pilot who's currently leading flight testing for A350 development. Here's what he had to say on the subject. When you get in an Airbus cockpit, the controls, they're very much uh, the same for the pilot. It will find the exact same side stick, the same throttles, the flap lever is the same, speed brakes. 
the main displays. It looks the same like the flight directors, the navigation displayed, how the weather is displayed, how the terrain is displayed. And then what we call the FCU, it's where you select all the autopilot function. It's pretty much the same throughout the fleet. Okay, so it seems that Airbus's common cockpit architecture is way more than just skin deep. And for a pilot in Jan's position, this makes their life a whole lot easier. We do a lot of manual flying at flight tests. In the morning, I can fly at 3.20, in the afternoon at 3.50. And after maybe five to 10 minutes, I just forget about the mass behind. I mean, yeah. the aircraft handling wise, yeah, it's pretty close. But this design philosophy isn't just a joy for pilots. It's also a joy for airlines. Crew training is a massive burden, often costing tens of millions of dollars a year. And Airbus's cockpit philosophy helps to ease that burden. Now, for some context, it usually takes about five weeks for a new pilot to earn type certification on a commercial jet. The same is true if a pilot is transitioning between aircraft built by different OEMs. But if you're transitioning within the Airbus family, the whole process is far smoother. When a, a pilot is transitioning, the only thing he will have to learn is how to manage all the, the, the uh, the information, how to get it, uh, how, to in, how to organize it. So when you're qualified on a 330 or 350, you take an additional course of eight days mm -hmm. and, and you can be both qualified on the, on the two aircraft to, uh, under the, uh, the common type rating. Of course, the A330 and the A350 are pretty similar in size. But even if you're moving between, say, the small A320 and the giant A380, the process is still fairly short. This isn't just due to the similarity of their cockpits, but also because of their fly-by-wire controls. On our aircraft, the pilot sends an electrical rather than a mechanical signal to the control surfaces, and those signals can be programmed such that all these aircraft handle very, very similarly. So you will see that the handling characteristics of a two-engined A320 will be very similar to those of a seven times heavier four-engined A380. The upshot is that if you're a pilot, any Airbus jet will both operate and handle in a similar fashion. And it means that even if you're moving between a small Airbus and a big one, it'll only demand three additional days of training. Now it's time for the million dollar question. How does this actually affect an airline's bottom line? Well, having your pilot spend more time in the air and less time in the classroom is a plain better utilization of resources. And Airbus says that commonality alone can improve pilot productivity by 2%. Now, that might not seem like a lot, but remember, airlines can spend tens of millions of dollars a year on crew training alone. When put in this context, 2% savings is massive. If, however, you remain unimpressed, well, that's only where the savings start. Once a pilot has gone from 320 to 380, in the example that we just talked about, why not let the pilot continue flying the 320, the aircraft that he was familiar with mm -hmm. from the start, right? So that pilot would be able to fly both the 320 and the 380 in what we call a mixed fleet flying configuration. Mixed fleet flying is pretty self-explanatory. It means that pilots at a given airline can fly a mixed fleet of aircraft. For instance, flying the A350 and A330 at the same time. This dramatically improves pilot productivity, helps airlines to reduce their total number of pilots, and improves scheduling flexibility. And this is the real secret sauce. At airlines doing this kind of setup, going beyond cross-crew qualification and getting the extra bit for mixed fleet flying, we can see a pilot productivity increase up to 15%. And we have been able to demonstrate up to $8 million per aircraft benefit. Wow. Now these savings are obviously huge for airlines. When you take $8 million a plane and multiply it across a fleet of hundreds of planes, well, those figures are substantial, and it's really no wonder that airlines like Thin Air, SAS, Iberia, Aer Lingus, and others have become Airbus loyalists. Each one bought their first Airbus jet long ago, and here they are, decades later, buying even more to help ensure that their costs stay low. This is obviously a huge win for Airbus. By creating this ecosystem, they've been able to lock in these repeat buyers. Now, these existing Airbus customers are the most obvious beneficiaries of cockpit commonality, but there's an entirely different customer segment who might see an even bigger gain. 
that would be new startup airlines. If you've watched my channel before, you'll know that starting an airline is incredibly tough. Margins are razor thin, and competition is brutal. In order for these airlines to succeed, they have to be very careful in how they use their limited resources. And one such airline that's currently facing this challenge is Starlux. Starlux is a new airline out of Taiwan. Now on the surface, Starlux has all the makings of a successful airline. They have experienced leadership, and they've built an incredible onboard product. But a great onboard experience doesn't necessarily make for a successful airline. In the case of Starlux, they have to overcome a pretty significant obstacle. Taiwan already has two major international carriers, and the island isn't all that big. So in order to actually compete with these established players, Starlux needs to keep its costs down without sacrificing the incredible onboard experience that makes them unique in the first place. So what did the airline do? Well, they turned to Airbus. Starlux flies the A321neo, A330neo, and the A350. And this all Airbus setup has helped them in two key ways. First off, instead of spending on excess training, Starlux can use its limited resources on building a unique passenger experience. On board, you'll find some pretty cool amenities like zero-g seats, theater-style entertainment, fine dining, and even onboard facials. They've also been able to invest in a one-of-a-kind space-age lounge, which they fittingly call the Galactic Lounge. This has helped the airline to differentiate itself in a crowded market. And let me tell you, these sorts of investments aren't cheap. So that money saved in training seems to have gone a really long way. Second, its all Airbus fleet has helped it build out its network. Remember, Taiwan is small. So in order to grow, Starlux plans to tap into the entire Asia Pacific region, using Taipei as a feeder city to connect to North America. Now, building such a globe-spanning network demands a diverse fleet of planes. And because Airbus cockpits are quite similar, integrating multiple aircraft types at once and getting their crews up to speed is much, much easier. And in turn, it allows airlines in Starlux's position to scale and diversify their fleets stress-free. Ultimately, this all Airbus setup has helped Starlux find early success. Not only does the carrier get high marks from customers, but it's actually making money. In the first half of 2023, the airline posted a net profit of over 10 million US dollars. At the end of the day, when new airlines like Starlux can succeed and grow, well, it ultimately helps Airbus to lock in loyal customers from literally day one. And this helps with long-term order stability. In fact, this exact thing has already happened with Starlux. At this year's Singapore Air Show, the airline doubled down and ordered 13 new Airbus jets. Okay, so it's clear that cockpit commonality is a huge advantage for both Airbus and its customers. And you might be wondering, what about Boeing? Do they have anything similar? And the short answer is, kind of. They do have some congruency across their lineup. For instance, the 757, 767, and 777 cockpits are all quite similar. But unlike Airbus, whose cockpit lineage can all be traced back to the A320, Boeing's lineup has no such heritage. Now, to Boeing's credit, things are changing. Their upcoming 777X shares much of its cockpit architecture with the 787, and it seems that Boeing wants to model their future cockpits around the Dreamliner. But Boeing's most popular plane, the 737, is kind of holding them back. The 737's basic systems architecture has changed little since the 60s, and it's vastly different from, say, the modern 787. Until Boeing decides to move away from the 737 family, it seems that Airbus will continue to have a leg up when it comes to cockpit commonality. And this distinct advantage should help them to continue to win business well into the future. So what do you guys think? Is cockpit commonality Airbus's biggest competitive advantage, or is it something else? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Oh, and speaking of Airbus cockpits, I've had a bunch of you ask me to give away more of these Airbus cockpit tees. I haven't done a giveaway in quite some time, so how about we do one now? 
All you gotta do is subscribe, leave a like, and comment down below what your favorite Airbus plane is and why. I'll pick a few winners based on my favorite answers. Oh, and these shirts aren't for sale, so for now, this is the only way to get one. Thank you so much to my patrons for helping to make this video possible. If you like what I do and want to help the channel grow, go ahead and check out this link right here. And as always, if you learned something new today, leave a like and subscribe to keep learning. And until I see you again, don't forget to look up.